Impact. Simple. <laughs> That's how eBay works if you're a buyer, you know. You got Good afternoon everyone. I have uh, purchased another stereo system. I'm weak. <laughs> um, this one that I've got here, just give you a glimpse there, it's a sharp brand. Don't know the model number because I've forgotten it, but it is on the back. This has been in a charity shop for um, about three weeks-ish. Yeah, it's got to be about three weeks now. Um, they had it marked up at 40 quid. CD player doesn't work, um, but I believe from the sound it's making and the symptoms of this not actually closing properly, that it's probably just a sticky mechanism. So um, one day I'll open that cover up and I'll have a look, but I'm not worried about that because I don't really use the CD player. If I play CDs, it's on the computer anyway, so I'm not too fussed about that. Um, so I'm going to flick you around so we can have a better look at it. It's not, it looked, looks like a stack system because of this, but it isn't. This, from here down, is all one unit, one stereo, like the one I've got in the bedroom. Except this one's obviously got the CD deck added. But it's got the separate turntable. I have no idea why they did that on a lot of these stereos, but that actually reminds me I've got another one that I've been given, which I'll probably pass on to a friend of mine because I don't need it, but he doesn't have one. I think he'd make more use of it than I would, so because um, I'll probably just end up going down the tip anyway where it came from, actually. <laughs> Anywho, um, I have I had been wanting this for the, the last three weeks and I, every time I went past the charity shop window I was like I'll find the money one day to get that <laughs> well I was actually expecting it to be sold but like I said been there three weeks and I went past the window today and noticed they'd knocked it down to half price so it's 20 pounds instead and I just thought I can't walk away from that it's actually left me a bit short for you know cash for my sh groceries and whatnot but I've got plenty of crap I can stick on eBay, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, so yeah, and like I said, everything is working, apart from the CD deck. That's got what I believe is only a small issue that I should be able to resolve. But uh, I actually bought it because I like the look of this one more than I like my Marantz one over there. Um, I'll get into what I'm going to be doing with that one in a minute but uh, we turn on that's one of the reasons I bought it because it's got the um, VU meter here in um, LEDs and there's little probably red LEDs in there it's got X base there but I don't know how you change that I've not found any buttons on here to change it <laughs> uh, that's true. That's all. What I like about this as well, it's got auto scan. You can actually choose whether it auto scans or if you manually tune it. And then it's got preset tuning as well, so I presume you can preset it and then just click through them. Yeah, like this. Let's see. Is that showing up or is there a bit of light reflection? There we go. You can just flick through like that. So I can actually preset stations as well. That's cool. FM, MW, LW. Uh, graphic equaliser, you know, photo, CD, tuner, tape, AUX. I did have a tape le in here. Um, I'm guessing whoever tested this at the charity shop has left the tape in there, so I think I'll see if they want that back. But... Uh... There we go. Hang on.
Her day. Oh. Crank that down for a minute. Uh, auto scan on. That's what I like. You can actually turn it on and off. You see, if I turn it off, then I can do it manually, you see. But if I actually turn it on and then press the tune button, it does it all on its own. And it's not actually finding the station. <laughs> it's not finding any stations. <laughs> it should. Start to regret pressing buttons now. There we go, Radio 1. I'm not going to do that for too long, because we know what YouTube is like. So let me just, let me just show you what the CD deck does. Don't know if you heard that squealing, but it actually sounds like a belt. So I don't know if this is going to be belt driven or gear driven, I won't know until I look it up. If it's belt driven, I've got belts, so that's not problem. If I open it, it opens absolutely fine. And I can actually see a belt in there, so I think that's going to be an issue. But it gets to that far, makes that squealing noise, and it just stops. So I'm pretty certain it's just a mechanism issue in there that's preventing it from working, so one day I'm not too fussed about it at the moment because I'm probably not going to use that that often. If it, even if it did work, I wouldn't use it that often. Any CDs I play are often played on that, so on the PC. Uh, but I can easily take off the cover and get to the CD deck, so not an issue. I'll fix it one day. Switch to tape, but for some reason when you switch to tape or phono, this stays on. I don't know why. Like I said, there's a tape left in here, so I'm going to press play. With an fist, I wake up. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? It's, <laughs> it's a Bon Jovi tape they've left in there. I don't know, they may not want it back, but I kind of feel bad, because they may have been using that to test anything when they get this in. They had a much, much, much more modern stereo in there as well for £15. But it was a bit too modern for my liking. It was all in silver and whatnot. And I really don't like that era of stereos. I like the 1990s and 80s now when they're all nice and, well, black like this. It also came with a pair of um, sharp speakers. Um... Rated wattage is 25, but apparently, according to the sticker on the back, 50 watt is the absolute max they can handle. And that is actually quite a large um, speaker in there. Tweeters work. These are metal grills as well. Ow. And just quickly, there's the um, Fono. This plays absolutely beautifully. What I'll do, I'll put a record on when I've got it set up in that corner. And I'll give you a little listen but I had this one playing and as you can see there's some muck there and it didn't even hiss or skip or do anything when it ran over that and I think I could be wrong but it looks like a brand new stylus to me on here does it look like a brand new one to you guys it looks new to me anyway I can't imagine the charity shop would have put that on there but Maybe the previous owner did before they retired it, for whatever reason, because it looks like it's been stored, it's full of dust. <sighs> Alright, anyway, less rambling, I need to clear this area because, well, I want some room up there to move. And I've got to clear the Lego up that Nemo kindly knocked off out of my green trailer there. But I need to get those chest of drawers out so I can access the outlets behind, because... That's a stack system, so there's like four sockets or four plugs plugged in down there. That's the disadvantage with some of these stack systems. I designed them like that. Some of the stack systems I'd come across, you actually plug them into each other for power. Not this one. Separate bloody plugs. I don't know why they did that. It's annoying. 
But anyway, less rambling. I'm going to get this area completely cleared, get you on a tripod, and uh, we'll get the new system set up. Right, you're at a bit of a funny angle, but I have got some room cleared. I've got enough room cleared anyway. Um, uh, all my cuddlers all got knocked on there, I've just realised. Anyway, I've just got to clear a bunch of stuff from up this corner, then I can get the new stereo in. Uh, I actually forgot, I've got a speaker on here that I need to move. Let's get that off first, because that's got to go with the st other stereo. <coughs> because uh, my brother's got the other one, or is going to have the other one. Right. Don't need that. I'm not going to need that either. And one of these push lights down there. That's, I wonder if stuff had actually fallen down here. Uh, I'm going to keep this speaker cable up this corner for now. I don't know if you can see me waving that around. Because I don't know if the other one's going to reach. So I will I'll just loosely tie that up there for now. Uh, and that's the radio cable. I do need that one. It's got to stay, but <laughs> the rest of it doesn't. Oh shit. Yeah it does. <laughs> um Right, I've got a plug or an extension cable that runs all the way around and goes under my uh, Lego tables here. Um, but I don't really want to use a big old six-way like this. See, that's what was plugged in there before. Just for one stereo, four different plugs. So I don't want to use this six-way, I think. What's under here? Is that three-way? I've got a little three-way here. This will do. This will do just to tuck down the back here, I think. Mind you, that cable is... Ah! Somewhere, I do have a two-way, and that is all I need. It's not going to overload anything, because it only runs lights this side, and it'll only run the stereo this side. And I'll probably never be on at the same time, so and even if they were, it's not going to overload it. So I'm going to find that two-way and get that put up here. Uh, you can get those bricks that you plug into the socket, you know, with like a socket on two sides, at least two sides. But I really hate using those because they're not safe, not really. Right. Oh. I'm actually quite surprised. There's actually very few, very little, rather, in the way of cobwebs. I thought it was going to be jam-packed. Considering the amount of bloody spiders I get in here, anyway. I've actually got one up there. Right, so I need to shut you off. It's a freaking record. I'm going on like a broken record. Right, I've got speaker cables going over that side. I'm going to take those two speakers out. I'm not going to bother with them anymore because I like the setup, but it wasn't really working. So I'm just going to have a speaker above my head, up by the computer, and one up this end. So, uh, I guess I'll be back in a few. Well, I don't know where the two-way outlet is, so I shortened the cable down on this three-way, and I'll use that. Not a problem. I'm going to put you there. That's going to give me enough room. All I've got to do is plug it in.
Cobwebs up here in the corner of the window. Ooh. Drag those speaker wires that way because I am not going to need those. Right. We'll get the stereo in now, won't we? Right. Oh. Might be a good idea to disconnect speakers and things first. sorts on the floor down here. Right, stereo next. Well, it's been been tested allegedly. Now one thing I am gonna do, I'm just gonna go and grab a screwdriver. Careful, Nemo. Yeah. I just want to make sure it had the right fuse in. I've bought a lamp from this same charity shop and I checked the fuse out of curiosity and it was actually the wrong one. It managed to um, somehow sneak past all the checks. Maybe the person who did the pack check on the lamp um, just forgot to do it. Easily done. It's only a fuse. I'm not going to cry over a fuse, and that was ages ago anyway. <laughs> but uh, I do like to just double check things like that. Right. That's got. Tell you what, you wouldn't have thought there'd be much weight to something like this. That bloody is. Right, I think that'll be alright there. Uh, F, M antenna for some weird reason has got this plugged into it. I don't need that. Well, I don't need it on this one. I know I've got... Uh, I'll try that again. I've got a stereo that I could use this one on. Actually I've got a couple that I could actually use this on. So, I wonder if I could actually find that crimp piece on the end there and actually make another one up. Right, I'm gonna look at this. This is tangled up. <laughs> That's your phono power lead, it's just a little, um, Probably a bit bigger than a 3.5 mil, but you know it's just like a standard little DC adapter plug that just plugs straight into the back of the stereo, like that. Never seen that done before. A lot of these I've seen have, uh, you know, they've been um, ones that plug into the mains. It's the first one I've seen. I mean, you could easily adapt this to work from a 12 volt DC adapter. You don't even want a one amp one because it's actually rated on here at uh, 70 milliamps. So a one amp one would be more than adequate. You could probably get away with something like an 800 milliamp or something 12 volt adapter if you wanted to. Right, so that's those cables. We've got speaker cable. That 
to really ravel up and just you know put nice and tidily at the back here so there's no cables trailing everywhere to get in the friggin' way. It's got cable ties stapled to the back of this so I'll do that, I'll do that and uh, twist the ends of this cable tie together that's actually stapled to the back of the speaker. There we go, right. I only plan to have the two um, speakers so I'm going to put them on the front. I've also noticed that my Marantz system, which my brother is having, we've um, done a little trade. Put that around the wrong way, you dumbass. <laughs> he was selling me an SSD for 30 quid, and the stereo is worth about the same, so we're just going to do a trade. <laughs> but uh, I remember him saying something like he wanted something like that before, so I thought I'd give him first dibs. You know, before I stuck the stereo up for sale somewhere. Or what I was going to do is take it to a shop in town and see if they wanted it. Um, there's a guy that used to run Black Records in town, where I got a lot of stuff from, but uh, that closed down. Because, um, well, the guy I knew running it, took it over from the original owner, he took Black Records over and in his words they were polishing a turd but it was still a turd it's just the shop was a total mess which it was there was no organization or anything and even a friend of mine that comes round he used to go in there and arrange things nice and tidily and the shop owner would just go and mess it all up again this, you know he's one of them people he just couldn't help it. So um, the guys that took it over eventually closed the Black Record shop down and then opened up another one in town where it's a lot more organised, a lot more tidier, a lot more pleasant. So, you know, like the guys said, it was a turd and they were just trying to polish a turd, but it was still a turd. <clears throat> right, yeah. I'm actually, I think I'm lucky in this flat because not only do I have a socket on the wall for the satellite dish because we've got a communal satellite dish there's one for Freeview TV which would have been your analog TV many years ago they sort of repurposed the analog transmitters to transmit digital television that's what we call Freeview here you can get well a lot of TVs have it built in though but when it first came around you used to get a little box about that big that you'd stick on top of your TV or beside your TV if you had a, you know, an LCD. Back in the day, I'm going back a few years there. <clears throat> but like I said, most TVs these days have the Freeview system built in. But I think you can get like around 70 to 80 channels, something like that, on the Freeview network. I think it was great that they decided to do that rather than, you know, just leave the transmitters derelict. They just repurposed them. But anyway, I've also got a radio, an FM radio connection as well, which is what this one is. So, I've plugged all that in. Now, I can actually do that on this one. Slide all of this. Back. Actually, I may not slide it all the way back. I do need to pull that. I need to send towel. It's a funny looking towel, isn't it? Put that curtain down there because uh, I've just realised I'm going to have to get down the back there to connect the other speaker up. Which has got to go up in that corner. Power's on, isn't it? All I want to know. Those speakers that side I'll take down another day. I'm not doing it today. I've still got some groceries I want to go and get and whatnot. And what I will do is attempt.
turn you around a this away. Because that speaker's got to come down now. <clears throat> now I don't know where my two-way outlet went. I've, I remember putting it somewhere when I had a big old clean-up in here. Now I can't remember where I put it. <laughs> Which is typical really, isn't it? Right. I'm going to take you two out of the way because I can see me knocking them off. Uh, that speaker cable goes over that shelf just up there, so... Let's put Celestia there. I'll put that record there. Put that and slide down up there for a minute. Bon Jovi. I'll put Bon Jovi down there. I'm not knocking anything off if I can help it. I had to do all this when I put that speaker up there because the connection for it is behind all of these. And what I'm going to do, because this is actually quite a long speaker cable, so what I'm going to do is connect this to the one that's already there and gently pull it along. I might just use a bit of tape to. Uh, connect it but there's the connection that's what I, what I needed to get to okay let me ask to piss around Whoop. Up there. I'm not using these ones at the minute either for the computer system but I've sort of been in two minds whether to connect them back up so I have four speakers or take them down, I haven't decided yet. That one's got to come down, it's a Fidelity speaker this one. Sod you. Fidelity's had enough, it's keeled over. It's passed out on the floor. Alright. Tell you what, these speakers have actually got some fairly thick speaker wire as well, look at that. Oh, pretty damn thick. Right. So. You know, look at that. That's got a bunch of cobwebs all on the back there. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. Well. Sorry, no one's going to see it up there, are they? Downside is there's like three pieces of cable connecting that speaker, so that sounds like the police. I've always been asked how can I tell? It's because at least here in Norfolk, all three emergency services, although the sirens sound the same. They actually have a different pitch and a different tone. That's how I know the difference. Which means basically means that each emergency service are using a different brand of siren made by a different company. So they've, if you've uh, trained your ears like I have, you can hear the difference. But I think to most people, a siren is just a siren. <laughs> I want some tape. Where's my tape gone? My tape's disappeared now. Tape! Give me some tape. Don't make me go into the bedroom because I can't be bloody arsed. There's just some PVC tape up there and I'm not sure how I'm going to get that yet. <laughs> it's on the shelves over there. Because uh, when I put those speakers and all this speaker in up the end here. A friend of mine climbed up there to do it and he's left the PVC tape that's up there. Somewhere, I don't know how you're looking at it. I don't think you are. Yeah, you can just see it. It's 
there. <laughs> but I've got to get across the Lego town to go and get it, and I don't really feel up to doing that. So, you know, but doesn't matter, sticky tape will do. It's going to just pop off the end of that shelf. I'm hoping. But all I want to do is just, you know, tape these together like that. Leave a bit like that. Right. Now, this is where it gets fun. I don't know if this is going to work and if I can do it without pulling any of the models off the shelf. That's the question. Will I be able to do that? <laughs> we'll find out. I could if I want to. Um. Well, actually, it's not a case of if I want to. Reposition that cable and try again. Is it working? It's working. It is working. There we go. Uh, really thin piece here but I think I'm going to try and match the cable I don't really want to use a mix and match of cable if I can help it I'm not going to nick it off of that either oh I don't know where I can steal it from I ain't got to go far to steal it either <laughs> taking them speakers out aren't I so much will steal it off of those cutters Try and get up that corner now. Emphasis on try. Because uh, when I cleared up down here, I actually piled a load of crap down the end here, such as my laptop bag. Right. Oh, cut through it right there. There we go. Oh good, I believe the screwdriver I got is going to fit. That's why I just cut it, because I want the thingy. This is going to be fun. I taped two cables together to keep it nice and tidy, and I only want one. Oh, this is going to be nice and tedious, isn't it? What can we talk about while I do this? What an idiot I can be, maybe. Yeah. Got into a little bit of a... I don't know what to call it, really. A fight on the internet this morning. Not intentionally. But I'm not going to get into details. All I'm going to say is I just... I basically got a big head, basically. And uh, learnt something myself as well because uh, the guy I was arguing with went, told me to do some research so I actually went and done some research and found out I was totally wrong. So, <laughs> yes, I did give him an apology. Because uh, I didn't actually realise that bipolar... Um, is actually very prominent in people with autism and Asperger's syndrome. Um, I 
although not everyone with it has been diagnosed with them, them conditions. I knew ADHD was, but in the argument I was referring to bipolar because I didn't know it was. But, uh, yes, apparently, according to my uh, the research, it is true. And that might actually explain my mood swings, to be honest. See, I've, I've never been diagnosed with anything like that, and I get times where I don't feel I have what they call a meltdown because I don't actually, you know, cry or anything like that, like you can do when you have a meltdown, but I can get very irritable, very grumpy, very negative, very, well, basically not very pleasant to be around. Really not very pleasant to be around, so. And when I was looking at the actual official symptoms of bipolar, I uh, thought that sounds just like me when I have one of those mood swings. So maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's um, a bit of bipolar disorder there that just hasn't been diagnosed. I'm going to have a word with mum next time I see her. So again, yeah, they kind of uh, put me in my place. <laughs> I'm guessing I did actually um, piss them off. I didn't actually intend to piss them off. I was only trying to put my uh, my point of view on the situation across. Maybe I did it in the wrong way. Well, actually, I know I did it in the wrong way. <laughs> you know, there's no maybe about it. I did it in the wrong way. And uh, what was it I got called? I got called a fat prick. And a tubby bitch. <laughs> Um, I think the way I replied to him, it's probably warranted. You know. I'm only human, I fucked up. And I admitted that. That I got it wrong. <laughs> I was being a dick when it weren't necessary. Because I was, basically. And uh, I got put in my place. <laughs> End of, you know. <laughs> Fun morning. <laughs> I think he did accept my apology, but I believe I didn't even know he was a subscriber, so I think he's unsubscribed because I noticed I lost one. Lost one, gained one, <laughs> as I noticed from my notifications. But yeah, basically, if you're going to be a dick, people are going to be a dick back. I think that's the lesson learned. Don't be a dick. <laughs> I am actually disappointed in myself because, you know, I always preach, well I don't know if preach is the right word, but I always say, you know, you don't need to be a dick when you debate, and yet here I was this morning being a dick. <laughs> you know, disappointed because I, I don't like hypocrites, and there I am, I'm basically being a total bloody hypocrite, aren't I? That was very nice. Anywho, I do like to think that I can admit when I'm at fault and when I am just being a total prick and like I said, yes I was, but uh, in my notice this morning, we're all good now so who said he doesn't hold grudges, I don't hold grudges either, I can't. I ain't got it in me to hold a grudge. You'd have to do something extreme to me or my family for me to hold a grudge. So... Yeah, I'm not the sort of, I'm not a grudgy, grudge-holding type. 
to make sure that I'm screwed and connected. Yeah. Uh, this is going to be fun. My best option. Tape on this one. A lot of mess to clear up. Let's get rid of these bits of tape. I want to go and get some groceries this evening. We'll do it this evening because the stores are nice and quiet. I'm not in any rush for anything, so. Take you off there, do I, Rainbow Dash? Right. Why have I got a lump of blue tag stuck on there? I don't remember putting that up there. I must have, because it wouldn't have got up there by itself, but I just I don't remember putting it up there. as well twilight so we'll drop this cable down the back this cable's gonna be yards too long so I'm gonna have to trim this down as well I keep standing on it alright all right, Applejack that's got to go under your ass there we go some little skunky We'll pull the girls forwards like so. I should be able to drop that straight down the back. There we go. Just like that. Let's run it down the back out of the way. And I was then just debating if I really wanted to cut this or not, but I, uh, I will. I'll give this a little test run. I was going to show you a record, wasn't I? So I'll do that in a minute. Right. I want, I don't want a bit of slack on here so I can roll this forwards, aren't I? So if I put something like that on, that should be enough slack. If it isn't, I can just unwire it from that connector up there. No, I've got wire cutters. You just saw me have wire cutters and I still use my teeth. Should have left this out, it might have been easier, but never mind. Right. It's gonna be bloody awkward to get in there, isn't it? There's one. Round. And I can actually roll that back a little further. That'll be alright. I'm just, uh, I'm really shit with the camera, aren't I? I'm bring you this way a little bit. I'll just go grab the oversized CD when I remember where I put it. I moved it out of the way. No, that's the cover 
Well, that's alright, I'll just use the one behind you. I'll use the other one. Alright. Switch it on. Tuner. Just want to make sure this speaker's working. It is. Alright. Get copyrighted now, won't I? Switch on the phono. This is there's a size select on this as well. That's for the um, autoplay feature. I have no idea what this is. It's extremely clean though. That go on there. Press play. There is a dust mark on it. I need to go into that shop I was talking about and get some um, cleaning stuff for these. You can get proper cleaning fluids and whatnot. There's a little bit of crackle coming from this. Oh! It just says play, it doesn't say it stops as well. Ah, you press the cut button. Right, and put that back in. So yeah, don't know how well that came through, but sounded good to me. That's balance. Do all these light up okay? Yep. That sounds very much like a belt is slipping on the belt drive. So I've got a bunch of spare belts. So I've got a hope I've got one that'll fit. Uh, stick it back on that for now. There we go, I've just got some cable to clean up. But I actually um I don't know, I just prefer the look of this system to my uh, Marantz. As well as, I like the VU thing on the front here as well. Let's go see. I shall do that in a bit. So we'll get the um, stations tuned in. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye.